Patients trust their doctors with their health and often with their life. A UCLA gynecological oncologist allegedly violated that trust by reportedly sexually harassing or abusing at least 100 women. Take a look. Dr. Heaps would touch my breasts inappropriately using his whole hand. He would compliment my breasts. He would touch my pelvic region in an inappropriate rubbing manner. As I look back, it didn't feel like he was looking for lumps. I feel embarrassed and shamed and a deep sadness that it went on for so long. About 10 years ago, I started seeing Dr. Heaps because I've had breast cancer myself, so Dr. Heaps was touted as the best. The first time I went to see Dr. Heaps, I was taken into his office. I was always led to believe that the high risk of cancer would be there if he didn't continue to monitor. One of the things that Dr. Heaps said to me that still rings fear in me, I can do this ultrasound on you, two weeks later you can develop cancer and it'll be too late. I was also told in one appointment that my breasts were perfect and I would not need to have an enhancement, which I had never inquired about. During the vaginal ultrasounds, he would use the wand in a manner that I felt uncomfortable, but I trusted him. I, I like life. I didn't want to have cancer again. This conduct began in the first year and continued until my very last appointment. After that visit, it was fairly consistent with the abuse. About six months ago, when I saw the news alert that Dr. Heaps had been arrested. I had an instant sense of all the blood rushing out of my body. I'm one of those people that he abused. This is me, he did this to me. And suddenly having to face all of those appointments, the comments, the inappropriate touching, and look at what had happened to me. It just made me feel sick to my stomach. And what causes me sometimes even more anger is how UCLA neglected to protect me and the other women as patients. There were numerous complaints, all of which I'm only just now learning about, but happened over the years that I was seeing Dr. Heaps. This shouldn't have happened, and it should never happen again. Ellen and Stephanie are both joining us today, along with their attorneys, Darren Kavanaki and Jennifer McGrath. I wanna thank you both so much for being here. Darren, I want to ask you off the bat, currently there are both criminal and civil cases right. being brought? Yeah, so uh, there's criminal charges where the district attorney is trying to put him in prison for those three charges that you referenced. We're hopeful that the district attorney is ultimately going to file even more charges based on uh, workup that's being done right now. And then separately, there are civil lawsuits where there are now about 100 women who have come forward filing claims. And when did the first reports about Dr. Heaps come out? There was a Title IX investigation, which is UCLA's own internal review, um, which found that Dr. Heaps violated the sexual abuse and sexual harassment policies. Through those interviews, there was a doctor who described the medical board being in Dr. Heaps's office taking photographs between 1997 and 2000. And that was uh, allegedly uh, with respect to similar allegations. So obviously that was many, many years, many years before, before these claims have now become public. Right. So can you explain or any thoughts about the long delay and all oh. the women impacted in that interval? Yeah, UCLA needs to answer um, and explain to the public and the community uh, as to why these complaints went unheeded. We have clients who reported back in 2014, multiple times in 2017, and UCLA uh, did not take any action until the end of 2017. And it seems like there was a financial incentive to do so. UCLA bought his practice in 2014. And there was actually a newspaper article that came out in 2016 about the highest earning employees in the University of California system. And he's on that list as one of the top earning staff. It's primarily athletic folks, coaches, athletic directors, and then a few doctors. And he's one of the top earning doctors. So it, it's not unthinkable that UCLA had a financial incentive to help sweep this under the rug. And frankly, our allegations is that they prioritized money over the health of, of women.